Now we need to draw the walls for the upper ground floor, but these are different from the walls on the lower ground floor. And I drew the dimensions for your benefit so you could see what we're doing, but they're going to maybe be in the way at the moment. So we can turn them off, we can delete them. What we can do in order to turn them off simply temporarily is to select a dimension, right click, layer, hide layer, and as long as they're on an appropriate dimension, we'll hide all of the dimensions on that layer. Of course, if they're on the same layer as the line tool, then that wouldn't work very well. So we need to make sure that everything's on a correct, appropriate layer in order to be able to do some of these things, being able to turn things off and hide them. Now, when we're drawing the walls upstairs, we need to know the wall thickness, and the wall thickness of the walls upstairs might change. But currently, it's based on a wall thickness of 115, and it's definitely a composite, it's not all one material. So we'll go back to asphalt for now, and we'll type this in as 115. What is this made from? It's made from a timber frame, and this is an old house. And so it's the frame could be Oregon, the frame could be hardwood. It's not a pine, and it's not radiata pine, and it's not a standardized size that we would commonly be using in modern construction. I would always suggest that we'd be using a 90 mil wide frame. In this case, it's definitely not. We're probably looking at something more like 70 or 75. So we'll draw and we'll again do this in a counterclockwise direction and we can map the whole thing. Now if we did this really well, there's a faster way. Rather than drawing, we could use our magic wand. So because I've created a closed shape and all of the corners I know are correct, if I hover over the line, it's not quite sure where I want to do it. But if I hover inside the line, it figures out very quickly where I want to draw the shape. So again, the magic of the magic wand is that it saves us a lot of time because it is able to predefine shapes based on what we've already drawn. So I didn't have to turn off that line, I was able to use the line to define the wall. Now once I've defined the wall, then I probably want to delete that line. Before I do that, there's this other shape outside and this is our slab for our veranda. So in the same way, I'm going to magic wand that to create the shape because I don't want to lose it. So I've got a cover fill turned on, just means that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So when I again magic wand inside the shape and click, it defines the shape for me and that's created a slab. So now we've created walls and a slab on this story that look like this in 3D. What's it done? It's just breaking that slab because there is a wall that is intersecting through it. So if I was to view all of that in 3D, we'd see because this retaining wall is coming up through and the materiality of this being asphalt is a lower priority than the concrete block. It looks like the slab is being broken into two halves. In fact, that's one slab, but we see that it's currently being cut out. We're not gonna worry about that at the moment, but we will fix that later. The reason why I'm doing that mostly, so I can now go to my line tool, press Control A, and I can delete these lines. I don't need those lines anymore. I could keep them as a reference if I wanted to, um, if, if it would stop me from making mistakes later on, but now that I have the slab and now that I have the wall, those define my edge. So be very careful with deleting, but effectively those lines were there just to help me to know where that edge was. 